everyone and thanks very much for logging into this webinar on charting in veterinary dentistry. Just a little bit of a background on me. Um, I'm a veterinary nurse with a special interest in dentistry and I have worked in practice for approximately 12 years now and this is where my passion for veterinary dentistry grew. I left practice just over two years ago now and I have gained further knowledge on veterinary dentistry um, whilst working in the industry sector. I do feel really strongly as to how important, important charting of the oral cavity is. I feel that charting also goes hand in hand with any dental radiography that we'll go on and do, um, certainly when discussing a treatment plan. This webinar is a really good starting point for any nurse or indeed a vet who wants to perform a thorough dental and oral examination. Charting of the oral cavity during a dental procedure can only be performed, um, it may seem obvious, but while the patient is under general anaesthetic and certainly not to be attempted in the consult room or with the patient under sedation. The chart is a detailed representation of any pathology that may be found in the mouth the day of the procedure and also any treatments that have to be performed. You will have also noticed that I've included my contact email and our IM3 website address in the reference to any equipment that I might discuss during the short presentation. So what is a cohat? We need to refrain from using the word dental or saying coming in for a scale and polish as we provide so much more for our patients in this procedure. Just using the term dental provides no value to our clients. A cohat is a comprehensive health assessment and treatment. By referring to it this way, it increases the value of the procedure. If we can, an oral examination prior to any anaesthesia makes it easy to identify malocclusion prior to intubation. However, then we need to go on and do a full general anaesthetic for a thorough oral exam. The patient must be under full GA and be intubated for this procedure. A safe anaesthetic must be maintained. All patients should have an IV catheter with fluids and all their parameters must be monitored. A cohat will include a detailed oral exam and charting along with ultrasonic scaling above and below the gum line. Irrigation and polishing the teeth afterwards using a low speed handpiece. Full mouth x rays are necessary for accurate diagnosis and treatment. We then need to follow on with dental home care. This needs to, needs to be discussed with the owner to maintain good oral hygiene after the procedure, and this will also help maximise the time between the procedures, the cohats. Use the post-operative checkups to reinforce the value of dental care and demonstrate home care, so toothbrushing, to the owner. A cohat will allow for complete resolution of all painful dental problems, which will make the pet feel immediately better and more comfortable. We need to remember that dentistry is not only rewarding, but it's also very profitable for the practice. A good way to start making dentistry profitable in your veterinary practice is to work as a team. All staff members must have a consistent and convincing message. Say the same thing and say it all the time. Educate front of house to answer common questions. As well as providing confidence for staff and clients, I believe it also helps with job satisfaction. Use your client notice board to give personal testimonials of previous patients that you have helped after giving them oral treatment and the difference that that has made to their quality of life. Think about what stage your practice recommends professional cleaning. Again, all staff members must provide the same education to your clients. Does your practice recommend a cohort at maybe grade one, which is gingivitis? Or would some colleagues wait until they've seen a patient with stage 2 or 3 periodontal disease prior to recommending a cohat? Does your practice have a dental home care protocol? We need to discuss toothbrushing with our owner and demonstrate how to. 
think about doing this before the procedure if this is at all possible. Brushing needs to be carried out at least once a day if we can or every second day. If owners can't brush then they could think about feeding them a specially formulated dental diet or potentially using home care products. Oxyfresh water additive is really good. It can be given to pets at home in their drinking water. It's completely tasteless and odourless. The patented blend of oxygen and zinc helps break down the organic compounds in the mouth, which in turn helps fight periodontal disease, eliminates odour and then maximises the time between cohats. One of the methods we use when completing a dental chart is to use a modified Trident system. The modified Trident system provides a constant method of numbering across different animal species and it's been adapted from human dentistry. Sometimes though we might identify teeth by their quadrants, for example the left or the right mandible or maxilla and then we refer to our incisors, canines, premolars and molars separately. Our numbering systems provide a basis of accurate charting and clinical record keeping. We have these clear canine jaw models and they're brilliant for education for both clients and also ourselves. The models can be separated for better visibility. Included with the model is a plastic educational chart which are really good for showing the tooth and the root location as well as the Trident numbering system for ease of identification. To explain the Trident system further, the first number in the Trident system always donates the quadrant and the second and third digits donate the tooth position and the sequence which always starts from midline at the front of the patient. For example, with the incisors we have 101, 102, 103 for the upper right and the upper left we start with our twos. 04 is always the canine and then 08 is always our fourth premolar. 09 then is always our first molar tooth. Remembering however that our feline patients are slightly different in that they don't have a maxillary right or left premolar in our cats. We're actually missing our 105 and our 205. Also on the mandible, we are missing our right and our left first and second premolar. So we're missing those 05, 06s and we're going straight from our canines, our 04s, all the way to our 07s and our premolars. So once we have charted our teeth initially, um, so done our initial count and missing teeth, before we to go on to do any greater stages in charting, we need to actually remove any of that healthy calculus. Um, to do this, we can use appropriate tartar removing forceps. They have a really nice curved beak, which allows easy removal of heavy calculus from the tooth root surface before we actually go on then and scale our patient's teeth. Always remove calculus prior to doing any imaging, any x-rays, um, because this will reduce any artefacts that we might see on the image. We really need to take care with our feline teeth so that we don't cause any fractures or damage to those teeth when we're taking off that calculus. After we have cracked off the heavy matter, we can then remove the remaining calculus mechanically, either with an ultrasonic or, or indeed both, or ultrasonic scaling and hand scaling. We have a nice little ergo universal scaler, which is perfect hand instrument for removing any calculus that might remain on that tooth surface. But I will discuss any scaling um, and scaler units in a further presentation. So just quickly now, I'll introduce the electronic dental scoring system. This is a digital way to chart our patient's mouth, so we don't have to worry about any wet or bloody handwritten dental charts anymore. And it can also be nicely presented to our clients on patient discharge.
it's designed to make dentistry really more systematic and encourages us to actually fully examine and chart the oral cavity step by step. It allows us to put all our patient's clinical findings onto this one digital file and this provides a thorough documentation and history for each patient. I really love the fact that there are tutorials available along the way to help us and this really helps us with all our clinical findings and to do our dental scoring. You can also personalise the chart so you can pop your practice's name and logo on and this really helps um, build a nice reputation and loyalty with our clients. It's really easy to register so if you just pop on to our website and click on the register for a free 30 day trial tab and you just need to enter your email, create a password and you're straight into the charting system. So just to reiterate that charting is a valuable part of your examination and it's also going to demonstrate to the owner that a full mouth examination has been performed. Most importantly it's also your legal document. You need to also perhaps consider taking a picture of the patient's mouth prior to any scaling and then you can attach these to the patient's file. Continue to chart and note any supernumerary and persistent deciduous teeth. And most importantly though, in order to know what is supernumerary, you must remember how many teeth that there should be. A good way is again to go back to your trident system and this will help guide you. We then need to note any fecation exposure. So this is the area where the roots diverge in a multi-rooted tooth. Again, we, we can also go to our tutorials and that will help us with any images. We need to use the explorer end of the ergoperiodontal instrument to palpate any hard dental tissue and to detect tooth defects, both supra and subgingively. This probe will allow us to identify any fractured teeth. The top image shows us an uncomplicated crown fracture where the enamel and the dentine is fractured, but there's actually no exposure to the pulp cavity. And the second image shows an old complicated crown fracture where the pulp cavity is actually exposed. We can then go on and use the probe end of the periodontal markings. These are actually etched in black on the ergo periodontal instrument and these are used to actually assess the probing depth of the tooth. So after we've done our initial scaling, and again I'm going to discuss this in a later presentation, we then need to go on and examine the sulcus of each tooth at a minimum of six locations so that we can evaluate the pocket depth and note its location. Remembering that our canine pockets should be no greater than a three millimetre depth and our feline pockets should be no greater than a one millimetre depth. An increased probing depth may be caused by periodontitis and this is because the attachment loss of the tooth is caused due to the loss of the periodontal ligament and the alveolar bone. When probing, try to not pass the same way twice or apply too much apical pressure. We also need to determine the level of gingival inflammation and also the gingival recession. This is the distance from the centro enamel junction to the margin of the free gingiva. You can see on the picture below the periodontal probe shown by the normal gingival margin. Follow the flow of the EVDS plus and include any mobility or flocation exposure. The tutorial is really good at guiding you through this process. You can use the probe under the gun line and feel for any missed subgingival calculus or any abnormal depressions in the tooth root surface. This little green posterior rubber mouth gag is available both in small and large and it's really good for keeping your patient's mouth open safely when charting. And what's great is you can also pop them into the autoclave. We need to then include any treatment information on our digital charts. For example, if you've done your extraction, was it open or closed? 
or if you've had to do a crown amputation, which was necessary due to a resorbative lesion. Whilst we are probing, um, we just need to know about pseudo pockets. These are actually due to gingival hyplasia, which can be due to perhaps chronic inflammatory response to plaque in the mouth. However, they can also be breed specific and are often seen in boxers, um, setters, collies and also Dalmatians. A low probing will reveal a probing depth greater than what's actually normal. The pocket will be due to high plastic tissue. You will find that the pockets will be coronal to the gingival margin and they also might migrate apically down to the tooth root. Sometimes surgery will be needed to remove the excess tissue and return the tissue to normal. The other thing we might come across is actual gingival recession with horizontal bone loss. So the inflamed gingiva actually receives apically exposing the cemento enamel junction and the root surfaces. But there's actually no increase in the probing depth. The tooth may not need to be extracted, certainly if it's stable, and it may just need to be cleaned sufficiently and then dental home care can be provided. So finally, we can note what occlusion class our patient has, whether that be a class 1, 2 or 3. Normal occlusion is class 1, which is correct interpretation of maxillary and mandibular teeth, and this provides optimal function for our patient. There are images on the EVGS which ex explains the occlusion classes. Occlusion can be checked with the patient's mouth closed and looking at the patient from the front and then from each side. It's important to remember that once we have charted and scaled our patient's mouth, full mouth x-rays need to be taken before a treatment plan is decided. Thanks so much for logging on and listening to this quick presentation. Feel free to contact me with any questions relating to equipment or charting and I'll be more than happy to help.